for over 25 years. America has turned to Fox for the greatest moments in sports. Are you kidding me? That's incredible. On the world's biggest stage. What a comeback. Oh my goodness. Nobody's ever been better. Now, an historic partnership takes flight as Premier Boxing Champions becomes the newest crown jewel of the Fox Sports universe. Here we go. And brings primetime boxing to a whole new level. Listen to this crowd. Ortiz is down. He's out. Bear witness as the sweet science is reborn. I promise you, when you step in the ring, and there's the right hand, I will baptize you. Where today's champions and tomorrow's superstars Spence comes up will step into the primetime spotlight and bring the best that boxing has to offer to millions of people like never before. Down goes Williams for the third time! And a fierce exchange! Look at the fight! Oh, the determination! Oh! Future of boxing! It's good to see everybody. Thanks very much for being here. Uh, we welcome you. I'm, I'm Chris Myers of Fox Sports. Uh, think of me as a CM, your MC for the afternoon and evening. We welcome all of you to Premier Boxing Champions, our news conference, our media experience, if you will. Earlier this year, uh, Fox Sports and the PBC announced a new four-year deal bringing the uh, sweet science back to broadcast television in a major way. Fox will televise 10 PBC fight nights a year representing uh, boxing to the largest audiences available on TV. And then in addition, there'll also be 12 fights a year on FS1. And all of them will also be broadcast in Spanish on Fox Deportes. And, and our goal, as always with Fox Sports, is to try to make it bigger, better, and serve the audience. The golden years of boxing among our goals, and it's a great sport, as you all know. Anybody from anywhere can work their way up to being a champion, and then they have to be on guard. One punch can change everything and create a dream for somebody else. So to get things started, uh, let's introduce our Fox Sports PBC broadcast team and sharing the play-by-play -play, uh, duties along with myself, uh, Kenny Albert, longtime Fox NFL broadcaster, someone who's no stranger to boxing, as well as baseball, hockey, college basketball. Kenny, coming all the way in from New York for this, thank you. Kenny does play-by-play -play on everything. He did the traffic play-by-play uh, -play on the way in. I'm sure you were caught. You, you know, you think you see punches in the ring. Road rage here in uh, L.A. on the freeway is, is terrible. Kenny, thanks for being here. Uh, also welcome Kate Abdo, who will host Fight Nights and Inside PBC Boxing, uh, our bi-monthly news and information show that kicks off in December. Kate hosted our coverage of the Mayweather-McGregor fight, as well as other primetime boxing events uh, on the network, and we're glad to have her here. So we won't do a stereo, we'll do a hug here and uh, an embrace for everybody and all our boxing Thank fans. You. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, yeah, very, very happy to be here and to be a part of uh, a new era for Fox Sports, for Premier Boxing Champions and for boxing. Uh, for fans watching on Fox Deportes, I'd like to introduce the man who's going to be calling the action for you, veteran boxing analyst and announcer, un buen amigo mío, Jaime Mota. Jaime has uh, called some of the biggest fights over the past two decades. We are thrilled to have him with us, it is going to be absolutely fantastic. Welcome, welcome. Bienvenido. Also, part of the Lifetime Team Achievement uh, Emmy Award winner, Jesse Lozada. Welcome. Bienvenido, Jesse. In addition, to those two fantastic members of the team. Not here today though, unfortunately. Joining the Fox Deportes team is a four division world champion and international boxing Hall of Famer member, Eric El Terrible Morales. And also, speaking of the Hall of Fame, Har Larry Hazard will also be part of the Fox Sports broadcast team as a rules expert and unofficial scorer for us. Uh, next, let's welcome a true legend, ladies and gents, former lightweight champion of the world, Ray Boom Boom Mancini who will be serving as an analyst on the Fox Sports PBC broadcast team. And finally, rounding out our broadcast team is former heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Lennox, 
will work ringside as our color commentator on our Fox Sports PBC broadcast. Fantastic to have him with us. All right. All right. Thanks, Kate. All right. How you doing there, champ? You all right? Good to see you. You know, Kate, all right? Make yourself comfortable. Uh, we're going to have you, uh, if you can stay in the middle, hang around here because uh, we're going to introduce some of the fighters. Okay. Uh, and if they get out of line, you'll take care of them, all right? Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're kind of the Fox lot bouncer. Is that okay? And, okay. And, and dress for the occasion. By the way, good to see you. Doing all right? Yes, I'm great. Thank all you. Right. Thanks. All right. Any trouble, he'll take care of it. All right. Uh, so let's uh, go to the upcoming Fox PBC schedule. Bring out some of the outstanding fighters, boxers who will be featured on Fox, FS1, Fox Deportes, all the way through April of 2019. It all starts December 22nd, live on Fox. For the first time ever, twin brothers and world champions headline an epic night of fights. Oh, it's the fight is over! A new era fighting. of PBC boxing begins in primetime on Fox. Jamal, the hitman Charlo! Jamal Charlo takes on Willie Monroe, while Jamal Iron Man Charlo... Defends his belt against Tony Harrison, also featuring heavyweight Dominic Brazil. PBC on Fox, live from Barclays Center, December 22nd, only on Fox. And this night, guaranteed to be an early holiday gift for boxing fans, sports fans, fight fans everywhere. December 22nd, we get things going with a heavyweight battle between Carlos Negron, who represented Puerto Rico in the 2008 Olympics, and Dominic Trouble Brazil, a member of the 2012 Olympic team. If we can have you two come out here and join us right this way. We'll have you uh, there, we'll have you over there, just to kind of give people a feel of the... Uh, you guys are big, by the way. All right. All right. When it's time to move on, Lennox, you tell them, all right? All right. So. <laughs> wow. All right. You'll get a quick photo op. Oh, there we go. I'm glad, I'm glad to see somebody smiling. I see. All right. Thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate it. We look forward to the fight. Thanks for being here. And I'm sure you saw this, but the Charlo twins, they, they flipped a coin to see who would be the headliner. Jermall won, so up first in the co-main event, hard-hitting Tony Harrison faces the younger Charlo brother. By one minute, WBC Super Welterweight champ Jermall Charlo. We get you guys to come on out. Photo up. Notice he's not, he's not letting go of that belt, I don't think. Many times. <laughs> Thank you. Just follow his cue. Uh, he's in charge. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. And, and you can go this way next time. We'll find seats for you. And finally, uh, in the main event on December 22nd on Fox, top rated contender Willie Monroe Jr. taking on WBC Inter. Uh, middle interim middleweight champion Jamal Charlo. Get you guys to come out. Want to do a little play-by-play -play on this? <laughs> no? Okay. You save that for the ring when you're actually getting paid. All right, that'll be good. Come on out. Well, this is how it goes. Huh? All right. Thanks, you can go out that way. There's a quick photo off. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. Notice the guys with the belts. They don't, uh, they're not letting them. No, they look pretty serious. They want to keep on to them. They want to keep a hold of those belts. <laughs> That's the goal. All right, uh, next up, Sunday, January 13th. This will be live on FS1. Undefeated top-rated challenger, Caleb Plant, taking on... IBF super middleweight champion Jose Uskategi, and that'll be here in Los Angeles. Gentlemen, thanks for coming out. Say hi to the folks here in Lennox. Glad to have you on the Fox lot and a part of our PBC Fox FS1 and pay per view coverage. Now, quick. And that's on FS1, 
January 13th. Thank you very much. If you like them coming this way, <laughs> whatever is easier to get to the earth, we have a seat for you. Just the one with the name it matches yours. All right. On Saturday, January 26th, live on Fox, U.S. Navy veteran and USC football standout Gerald Washington taking on heavyweight and rising star Adam Knockout Kanaki in Brooklyn. And we have you two guys come on out. Thank you. Nice to see you again, Gerald. <laughs> Oh, good. There's some guys can smile at each other. That's nice to see. They don't want you. January 26th on Fox. Remember that. They won't be smiling then, but we hope you put on a good show. Thank you. This will look for your uh, assigned seating area. And the main event on Fox, battle-tested veteran Jose Cito Lopez going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the undefeated WBA welterweight champion Keith Thurman. There we go. I like you, Scott. <laughs> All right. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see them face to face January 26th on Fox. A quick photo op. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll find your seat over there. Thank you. Appreciate it. And let's I'm going to bring Kate back up for a moment. You stay here, champ, and uh, she's going to take us through the month of February. Kenny will be joining us after that to help us with March, so it's all yours, Kate. Uh, all right, what have we got for you? Saturday, February the 16th, title challenger John Molina Jr. faces former WBC lightweight champion Oma Figueroa live on Fox. This is February the 16th, only on Fox for you. It's a fantastic night of action. Thank you very much, gents. Headlining the night on Fox for you, the always tough Miguel Flores will face WBA featherweight champion Leo Santa Cruz right here in Los Angeles. boys we have one other event coming up that same month as well on saturday february the 23rd 21 and 1 avni yildirim will battle the former champ anthony Durrell in minneapolis for the vacant wbc super middleweight title on fs1 gentlemen thank you and uh, before we announce our March schedule let's bring up Kenny uh, to do the honors Kenny March kicks off with a great one in Las Vegas isn't it thanks Kate great to be here Chris I'll have the traffic report ready for you before you head out so it's time now to tell you about our great bouts in March top-ranked challenger your Dennis Ugas takes on WBC welterweight champion Sean Porter live from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas Saturday March 9th only on Fox. Come on out, guys. March 9th on Fox. Thanks, gentlemen. On Sunday, March 24th, former junior welterweight champion Sergey Lipniets clashes with former Junior welterweight and welterweight world champion Lamont Peterson live on FS1.
March 24th on FS1. Thanks, guys. Moving into the month of April, former middleweight champion Peter Quillen takes on former super middleweight champ Caleb Truax and about to determine who climbs back into title contention Saturday, April 13th on FS1. April 13th on FS1. Thanks, gentlemen. On Saturday, April 20th, live on Fox, Adrian Granados fights former junior welterweight champion Danny Garcia. Come on out, Danny. Danny Garcia, thanks for coming up, Danny. Now, Adrian is under the weather, could not make it today, but he did send us this video message. Yo, yeah, man, I'm ready to go, dog. I just got sick right now, you know, so that's why I couldn't make it out. But uh, we're going to be ready for that, man. You better be ready, because I'm going to be ready. You've been talking for too long, bro. You've been talking for too long. All right, Danny. You heard from Adrian. What's your reaction? I'm gonna beat his ass. That's what I'm gonna... <laughs> he's already he's already sick. He must just stay in bed because he's gonna be on the same bed the night after the fight. Danny's ready to go. Thanks, Danny. Danny Garcia. And finally, the fight you've all been waiting for: Saturday, March 16th, the first ever Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. Let's go back to the video. On March 16th. Sports and PBC present one of the biggest title fights in recent memory, and here is the champion. The truth, Errol Spence Jr. The truth hurts. Defends his title against four division champion Mikey Garcia. Oh. Leo with the right cut. Two of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. Square off live at AT and T Stadium. March 16th on Fox Sports PBC Pay-Per-View. Live from Jerry's World, AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas, March 16th, only on Fox Sports PBC Pay-Per-View. Please welcome four-division world champion and current WBC lightweight champ Mikey Garcia and IBF welterweight champion Errol Spence Jr. March 16th in Dallas at Jerry's World. Thanks, gentlemen. We can't wait. See you March 16th. Chris, take it away. Thank you, Kenny. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Lennox and Kate. Uh, can't wait for that. It's going to be a terrific fight. Uh, we're going to get to all of your questions uh, in just a moment for all of the fighters. And uh, for those of us here at Fox, I I'd like to first welcome Mark Silverman, Fox Sports President, National Networks. Has some things to say, and we'd love to hear that music, whether it's football, boxing, whatever. Mark, you're up. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming today. I really feel the energy in the room with all these incredible boxers sitting here. Uh, what an amazing lineup of fights we have. Um, fans will now be able to watch these fights on broad platforms, reaching homes all across the country, watching on Fox. Fox Sports is thrilled to partner with Al Heyman and premier boxing champions to bring boxing back to broadcast television on a regular basis. We can't wait to watch these great boxers put on exciting shows. I'm looking forward to listening to Chris, Kenny, Kate, Lennox, Ray, as well as Jesse and Jaime on Fox Support is to give their insights that are uniquely Fox. So be sure to tune in starting December 22nd to watch it all go down. Thanks again for coming. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. And uh, by the way, I, I'm told we have a, a celebrity, a lot of celebrities love boxing. They love to go to the big events. In, in the house, we have actor, Emmy-nominated Emmy, uh, excuse me, Oscar-nominated actor. Mickey Rourke, is Mickey here? Is that true? Where is Mickey? Let's wave. Great to see you, Mickey. 
a friend of, of Ray Mancini's. That's his issue. We won't discuss that now. But uh, no, ter- the wrestler, right? We should have you do the boxer one day. But hey, I, from Miami, I remember Miami Beach High, you were a good football player. We used to watch, right, Ollie at the Fifth Street Gym with uh, Angelo Dundee back, uh, back in the day. All right, so we look forward to seeing you at, at some of the fights as well. All right, uh, enough of the chat here. Let's uh, hear from the boxers themselves. We're going to open it up to questions from uh, all of you in, in attendance. A reminder, uh, we would ask you uh, when you ask your question to just identify, introduce yourself, let us know who you are, your outlet, and uh, we'll be glad to answer uh, for any of the fighters, for anybody up here. So uh, where would we like to start? We have a question here. Thank you. Hi there, Lance Puckmeyer, Los Angeles Times. Mikey, for you, this is you know what you wanted to do. You wanted to do something different and be special. Taking part in Fox's first pay-per-view, is that part of what you wanted to do, especially moving up in weight against Errol Spence? Objective, you know, that is one of the objectives, you know, to get the biggest fights available and make the biggest splash, you know, and um, what better way than to do it, you know, on a Fox pay-per-view. Everyone's making a big deal about that and saying you're a massive underdog. Well, that's why I'm taking it, because it's such a big challenge for me, and that's what I'm about. I want the biggest fights, the biggest challenges. Uh, There's no one else out there right now um, that I can compete with at that level. Um, and, you know, Spence is the guy, so that's why I'm after him. And, Errol, for you, uh, being from Texas, um, bringing this fight to AT&T Stadium, how special is this for you? And how well do you think this fight's going to be able to draw? Well, it's a dream come true, and um, it's going to be a big fight. I might have a lot of great fans in Texas, and um, he has a lot of big fans, too, especially him being Mexican. So hopefully they come out to support each other. Yes, okay. Uh, Mike Hoppinger, Ring Magazine. Keith Thurman, everyone's been excited, waiting for you to come back. First fight in almost two years. What are you looking to prove? I had you that mic. Uh, Sean, will you pass that down? Thanks. Well, like you said, it's been a long time since I've been back in the ring, and um, I'm just going to prove what I've always proved, that I'm the best, that Keith one time Thurman, you know, I've been the problem, I am the truth. Your boy is swift. You know, any name that they have, I've already shown all them skills and those talents and attributes, you know, and I I plan on keep doing it. Um, A lot of people are itching. Um, I'm itching. They say, when you're getting back, champ, I said, you know, we'll be back soon. And uh, we got the fight date. I'm truly looking forward to it, and I'm going to perform like I always do. Hope that the fans come out. Thank you. This is for uh, Mark Ortega of Sporting News. This is for Keith as well. How long have you been healthy, and how how long did it take to – come to the decision you're ready to get back in the ring? Well, the injuries were, um, they weren't fun, and I didn't enjoy, you know, doing a lot of interviews, so I stayed out of the press and things of that nature. But what my situation was, was elbow surgery, which took about 10 to 12 months to recover from. Then we got back into the gym, and we suffered a hand injury. So um, all year I've been dealing with that. If I can't jab my sparring partners, there's no way that I'm going to get into the ring. Um, obviously, we gave up the WBC um, title, and we let these boys fight for it um, to bring some more action into the sport. I didn't want to be responsible uh, for no action being in the welterweight division, but I'm back. I plan on getting my belt back and more things to come in the future, but we're starting it off in January 2019. Chris. Okay. Uh, Mikey, Sean Zatel, Fight Hype. Uh, the sayings always went in boxing that a great big man will beat a great little man. Why is that not the case when you fight Errol in March? Well, I think that's um, that's pretty common saying, but every once in a while you get these exceptions where the smaller man beats the bigger guy, and that's what I'm after, and that's what I'm looking forward to, and I really believe in myself. That's why I'm able to, you know, keep challenging myself by moving up in divisions. Um, I have great skills that most everybody still hasn't even seen. And I think uh, Errol Spence will be the one to bring those out of me and allow me to perform to the best of my abilities. I think it's going to be a great fight. And this is one of those uh, occasions where the little guy beats the bigger man. Well, that's, I remember that's March 16th, uh, PBC on uh, pay-per-view. We look forward to that. We have more. Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports. I want to ask Errol first. Uh, 
there's some great welterweights sitting right up here, and you're fighting a guy that's had a lightweight title, and while we respect what Mikey's doing, don't you feel like an obligation to have maybe give a chance to one of the great welterweights that's out there? Um, well, I mean, that's the fight that's been offered to me. I think that's a big fight in Dallas. And uh, with Sean Porter, I thought that fight was going to happen. It, it somehow fell out. And um, with Keith Thurman, he's going to stay injured as long as I keep winning. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think me and him ever going to fight. If he mess around, retire, I get that WC belt. Well, Sean and Keith, what, what's your reaction to it? I mean, I know you respect Mikey and for what he's trying to accomplish, but what does it mean to you to see the best welterweight in the world instead of fighting one of the two other welterweights fighting Mikey? Well, first off, each one of these fights is a great fight for Earl Spence. Agreed. Okay? So, and outside of that, I don't know what happened with negotiation with Sean, but obviously... When I'm healthy and I'm ready, from beginning, when I stepped on the scene, I said I wanted this belt. I said I wanted that belt. I told you guys I want to grab all the belts, you know. So I'm still on a mission, but my health comes first. In boxing, there are times where what you want today, you're not going to get today. But you can still look forward to tomorrow. Luckily today, I think this is a tremendous fight that's going to happen. I think this is a big opportunity for all of us um, in working with Fox and I truly look forward to that up and coming fight. I look forward to getting back into the ring, establishing myself as the number one Walter Wade champion in the world, getting this belt back, and then negotiating for that big fight with Errol Spence, the one he thinks he'll never get. I'm not Floyd Mayweather, son. <laughs> and Sean, if you want to respond, uh, right? Who else? Right? Sure, I can do yes. that. Um, well, I, how do I feel about it? I feel like. Like you just said, it's a big opportunity for boxing. It's a big opportunity for Fox, for Mikey Garcia, Errol Spence. So um, for Errol to get in the ring with me after my fight and say he wants to fight me, I tell him it's an easy fight to make. Um, I have mandatories for the WBC. Errol Spence did not fall into one of those mandatories. So for me, it's not a matter of me wanting to go a different dis uh, direction. It's just what happens right now. Um, but phew, the room is full. It's full of champions, full of great fighters, great individuals, great athletes, and we're all going to fight eventually, and we're all going to put on great performances for you guys. Be patient. It's coming. Thank you. And then one last question for Jamal. Uh, Jamal, you win the coin flip, but it seems in a way maybe you lose because your brother is going to be sitting there, and you're going to be in the locker room watching your brother. How difficult is that going to be to you know, warm up and prepare for your fight when you have such an emotional thing as your brother fighting immediately before you walk out? Actually, um, I'm going to be celebrating with him. Um, there's no pressure on me. There's no pressure on my twin brother. I could have fought first. He could have fought after me. It didn't matter. We, we're going to get in there. We're going to do what we have to do. Emotionally, it won't be hard just to watch him? I've been watching him all my life. I'm ready. He's ready. You want to comment, too? On that or? Yeah. I mean, we did it before. We won the world titles in whenever, uh, 2016, May 21st. So I fought first. Um, I care less about fighting second, third, last, it don't matter. As long as I get in there and do what I got to do, handle my business and, and pre present my, my talent on Fox. Uh, we have over here, sorry. Yes, Constantino Garcia for Ring Magazine for the Charlotte Brothers. How do you guys feel about uh, headlining in the same card? Well, we finally got this opportunity to headline. Um, a lot of fans have been waiting on that. Uh, a lot of fans have a lot to say, so now we get the chance to show the world once we get to you know, pack the house and be there to, to put on the show. And you guys keep seeing us. We'll be back. Um, hopefully we can, you know, get on the undercard again, right? Um, I would love to be on pay-per-view with Earl Spence. Okay. Oh, we have one over here, uh, I believe. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mike Baca with the Undisputed Champion Network. I got a That's question fine. for the Charlos. Jamal and Jamel, um, you've been given the opportunity to make the first impression of this PBC on Fox rollout. What type of precedent do you want to set? We're both super excited to be... Um, opening up the show, making history for Fox. Um, I know I'm, I'm in tune, and my twin brother himself, he's in tune, and we're ready. Um, so you just look for fireworks from both of us, something explosive. Yes. To the Charlo brothers again, uh, you guys are super competitive. Who, who do you guys see seeing up? Between the two, who's going to be the biggest pay-per-view star between the two? We're both going to be the uh, superstars, so that really don't matter. Um, I know that I come December 22nd to steal the show, 
he's the main event. I hate that he won a coin toss because I should be the main event, but <laughs> that's none of my business. I'm there to fight on the 22nd, and I'll open the – well, I'll be the co-main event. So, um, let, you know, the best man win, and we're going to have fun. That's, but yeah, who's going to outdress who in the meantime? That's what I want to. December. I, I'm the flyest boxer in the game. <laughs> December 22nd. That's on Fox. We hope you tune in for that. We have another one here. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is for Danny Garcia, Francisco Martinez with FireHype.com. Um, Danny, if you get past Adrian Granados, who would you like to face after that? You know, I definitely want the rematch either with Sean or Thurman. But if not, you know, we just got to keep keep winning and keep building. But that those are the fights I really want. And all the big fights, whatever comes my way. I mean, as you can see, I'm probably, I fought the most fighters on the stage than any other fighters. So I fight anybody. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, two questions. Frederick Hawthorne with LA Watch Times. Uh, Leo, how's it feel to always come back in LA and fight in front of your fans? And uh, Mikey and Earl. Uh, did you hear that he said he saw a weakness in you when, he, when you fought Lamont Peterson and Mikey? What was the weakness that you saw? Well, it feels great. It feels great to fight here in my hometown, L.A. Uh, I always wanted to fight here, be in the main event, and now it's a bigger opportunity to me. Thanks to Al Heyman, always he's been there for me and give me great fights. And I want to prove I'm the best featherweight. Uh, 2018, is, it was a slow year. I only fought one time. I'm going to... 2019, I wanted to be a big year. I'm looking for three fights. We already talked, and is I want to get past Miguel Flores, and then I want Carl Frampton, and then I want Gary Russell. I want to put on the best featherweight. Those are the three fights I'm looking for right now, and I think they're gonna happen. I think. And is there another part to that? Every, everything answered on that. I know there was kind of a couple of questions. Um, it's cool. I mean, it's it's always, you know, it always look easy from, from the outside looking in. You know, a lot of people say, you know, they see weaknesses and they can exploit it. So, um, you know, I wish the team, you know, they practice that. And um, March 16th, you know, I'm going to show them why I'm the best what's way in the division and one of the pound-for-pound pound fighters in the world. And, uh, Mark? Well, I'm not going to tell you my secret. <laughs> But um, look, we we as a team, my brother, my dad, myself, have uh, seen you know his fights, and uh, we see opportunities. We definitely do see a good opportunity, and I wouldn't be you know challenging myself you know to these extents if I didn't see an, op an opportunity for me to win. I do feel that I have a, a good chance with with my boxing abilities, my experience, um, and overall, um, just like he says, you know, it always seems easy on the outside. Same thing, you know, you can ask my opponents, and they all thought it was going to be an easy task until they get in the ring with me. And that's why, that's why I think it's going to be a great fight because we're both, you know, great fighters. He is a bigger man. That's the challenge. But as far as skills, you know, there's nothing that you can, you can deny me or him. So I just, I just believe in myself that much. We have just a, a time for a few more questions. So if you want to get them in, but go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. For Leo, this is Mark Wicker from the Southern California News Group. How much were you looking forward to this being the Gary Russell fight? And is it a little dangerous, you know, not going right into that fight since that's really the one you want? Yeah, you know, every, every fight is dangerous. Uh, you're risking, uh, you know, to get those big fights. But, you know, I'm going to train hard like always. I'm going to be really motivated. And those big fights are the ones I want. I want to prove I'm the best featherweight. And I think I'm going to do that against Carl Frampton and Gary Russell, no matter what. Uh, uh, position they come if it's Gary Russell first or but first I want to get Miguel first, Flores and then we'll see what happens. Are we okay on questions here? We have one more. I'm sorry. We're just trying to get the mic to everybody who has a question. Go ahead. Um, question for Jose. Jose, um, what are you looking to prove against Kale Plant? You've been a guy that's been seen as avoided for a while now. Oh, we need the uh, yeah, we need you interpreter uh, interpreter, please. Yep, Gary, you can help with that, right? You don't enter. Uh, Kate may ha Kate can help us with that. I'm sorry. She, yeah, repeat the question, and she can. The question is uh, for Jose Uskategi and what he's looking to prove as a guy who's been avoided for a while now. ¿Qué es lo que quieres probar uh, siendo un, un tipo un boxeador al que han evitado mucha gente? 
desde hace tiempo ya. Bueno, este, yo no sé quién lo ha evitado, ¿no? Porque desde que yo me coroné campeón del mundo nunca lo he evitado. Si se han dado cuenta, se lesionó. No, usted no ha evitado, la gente ha evitado a usted, quería decir, perdón. Ah, ok, ok. Bueno, este, emocionado, contento para seguir demostrando la clase de peleador que yo soy. Uh, he's excited and, and happy to be able to have the chance to, to continue to prove what kind of a fighter he is. And if you ask a question again, he said he'll knock you out. That would be, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. A little humor, to make sure he knows I'm kidding. Okay, a few more questions. I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, a question for Mikey and Errol. Um, the whole world doubted the fight will happen. It is happening. What do you like about Errol Spence? And Errol, what do you like about Mikey? Well, a lot of people doubted this fight because of, you know, the weight difference. You know, a lot of people thought I was just bullshitting. I was just, you know, talking just to make a noise. But, you know, I was serious about it from the very first time I mentioned it. Um, I'm very excited for it. I was always pushing for this fight. Uh, I know there's a lot of options that I could have had options. You know, he had other options that, you know, he explored. But I'm happy that, you know, we agreed on this fight, that both sides, you know, took this fight. And, um, you know, I, I like that he is a... a come forward, action-packed, you know, fighter. He's looking for a knockout. He's coming strong. You know, that gives the fans, you know, their, their money's worth. And that's what I'm after. That's what I like. Um, I don't want to be in there with, in a boring fight. You know, some guys out there could be regarded as, 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 you know, great champions, but they don't really give the fans an exciting fight. They're running around, you know, and, and that's just not fun. That's boring. That, that, that doesn't, you know, appeal to the fans, and I don't like that. I want to be part in fights that people can remember for years, you know, to come. That people can always point out and and, and you know say that I was in one of those big fights. That's what I'm after, and I, I'm pretty sure that's that's something that that he also wants, and that's what that's what I like that he comes to fight. Well, what I like about Mikey is, <clears throat> you know, I respect Mikey. Um, he's a real fighter. Um, a lot of fighters in today's time. They get away from their legacy, you know, want to be great, want to be mentioned with all-time greats, and want to be mentioned with guys like Sugar Ray Leonard, Floyd Mayweather, Ali, Joe Frazier, Marvin Hagler, with these guys, and he's daring to be great. He's doing something that a lot of people are saying he's crazy for doing, but, you know, this is a legacy-defining fight for both, of us, for both of us. It's on pay-per-view, and it's at the Cowboys Stadium. This could be a huge turnout, you know, so... You know, I'm happy he took this fight. I really didn't have that many options after the Sean Porter fight fell off. Keith Thurman was injured, and um, I think Danny already had a fight. So, you know, this is a big fight for me. He's another huge name, four division champion, 39 and 0, and it's a great opportunity to show my skills. Thank you. Uh, just a few more. Yes. Um, Fernando Pimentel, uh, BehindTheGloves.com. Uh, this question is for uh, John Molina Jr. John, you're getting a fight. You had a fight here in LA from a few months ago, kind of fell through. You're getting to do that again versus an opponent you've been wanting to fight. Your thoughts on fighting in LA and fighting Omar Figueroa? Uh, like you said, uh, fighting Omar is a fight that has been a long time coming, you know, and uh, he definitely accepted the challenge. I think it's gonna be a great fight for, for LA. I think it's gonna be a great fight for, for boxing and definitely a great fight to uh, put on Fox. So um, I know he's gonna bring it. He always does. His record speaks for itself. But I'll be right there with them, and it's going to be a fun fight. And that's, uh, yeah, February 16th on Fox, that fight? Yes. A couple more? Okay. Uh, next one is uh, for uh, actually uh, Peter Quillen. Peter, glad to see you back, man. Just want to know how you feel coming back and showing your skills off on this stage and also going up into the new weight class. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I feel good. You know, this is, a, this is a huge platform. I don't think a lot of people understand, like, what primetime can do for a fighter's life. We actually get to be out um, and showcase a talent where a lot of eyes get to watch. You know, we see a lot of things, you know, in the boxing business where everybody's just trying to get the fans to watch. And, you know, with these kind of fights, you attract the fans, you know, like, you know, Mikey Garcia and, you know, Errol Spence, all these guys up on the platform right here is, you know, it, it motivates me because I know I got a big task ahead of me. You know, I'm, I'm fighting Caleb. Me and him have history. This is the first time in my boxing career where I had, like, a dialogue with a fighter and, and so much respect for him. And now we have to fight. That makes me look at my brother. You know, he from Flint. I'm from Grand Rapids. And I say, man, if this can happen, then, you know, what about when they have to say, yo, you want to fight Anthony Durrell? What do you say? You know what I'm saying? I say, you know, I just going to have to get that money. And we both agreed on that. So... 
I think that's what's more important. But I feel very good. I feel like I didn't took control of my career. I feel in a, bl a good place with God. I know you got huge plans for me. I know the guys that's in the 168 to pound, they, they're nothing to play with. So I got to be bring my best, and that's what I'm looking to do. Yeah, that's April 13th on, on FS1. We look forward to that. And yes, sir. Uh, Anthony Durrell, feels like I've been watching you fight for quite some time. What does it feel like to be back on this stage and fighting for a title again? Uh, it feels good. It, uh, it, it motivates me. I've been looking for this since I lost my title to Badu. I've been looking for the rematch with him, but I didn't get it. So uh, I've been keep fighting and keep fighting. And, you know, he he's the the next guy down since David uh, got suspended. But uh, he's a good fighter. I'm ready for the challenge, and uh, I will become victorious uh, February 23rd. And I think we're caught up. Are we okay? One more. I think the LA Times has another question or so. Okay, go ahead. Question for Sean. Uh, what was it like to beat Danny Garcia for you know for you to come back from that win? Uh, he's an accomplished champion. What was that you know victory like for you? <clears throat> it's every every it's every fighter's dream. You know we we aren't here just to fight and win and and, and get belts and get money. You know, it, it means nothing if we're fighting against other guys that nobody knows. You know, this guy and, and Danny Garcia is a guy who was only had one loss uh, against a very good fighter. Um, so, and he was trying to get his belt back. So it was it was a combination of things. Um, I've been building to get to this WBC championship for three, maybe even four years now. You know, and and, and the list just goes on from there. You know, so. For me to win the belt was one thing. That's a goal. Uh, for me to beat Danny Garcia was a, that was another goal. You know, so it was uh, definitely a moment where I had a lot of my goals accomplished and was able to just you know realize a lot of things about myself and trying to become a champion. And how many times do you watch the fight? I mean, do you put it in and watch it over and over and see? You know, no, see? no, no. It's it's <laughs> not. It's definitely not a situation where I'm going to look at it and uh, and just marvel at myself. Um, anytime I've looked at the fight was to figure out. And what round did I do something wrong? And what round did I not do as much as I could? You know, and um, that's that's all. The fight, my fights are. I never watch myself just to see what I did. What I did, you know. I always want to see what I could have done more of. Great, thanks. And I think just time for one more. Is that yes? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, I'm Cynthia Hi. Conti from Ring TV. Uh, for Lamont Peterson, you fought most of these guys over here, and you're back in championship level. What are you doing? What are you doing to get back on that road to become victorious? So just trying to stay a little active. Uh, I pretty much will fight anyone. You know, I have a lot of love and respect for all these guys, but you know, it's boxing. It's not like we're trying to kill each other. It's boxing. So just keep fighting the top fights. Any fight that's given to me, I'll take it, and uh, hopefully, I work my way back to the top. Great. And I just heard one more. Sorry, we put a limit, but somebody had a question and a mic, so. Yes, go ahead. My question is for Caleb Plant. How do you feel about fighting Kit Chocolate? What's your thoughts on it? I mean, Caleb Truex. You make sure he has a mic. Who's Kitaki? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was the question? How do you feel about fighting Caleb Plant? <laughs> you mean you mean Kit Chocolate? Yeah, yeah, Kit Chocolate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll answer that for him. <laughs> well, thanks for the question. The, the few of them that you asked me. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited how, to be part. How do I feel about fighting Jose Uzagategui? Correct. Yes. All right. I'll, I'll handle it from here. Thank you. Um, I feel good. Uh, you know, some of these guys they've been injured and they need tune-up fights and they've taken a long time off. It's been a uh, come fight time. It'll be a year out of the ring for me. I've had surgery on my hand, but I don't want no tune-up fight. I don't want no soft touches, no easy touches. They say this is the guy, the boogeyman of the division. Well, we really gonna find out what he is, and I guarantee you, he's gonna find out who I am. He says I'm going to be the easiest one in his career. Well, put some money on that because I don't believe that. This whole my whole career, I've been the A-side, and I feel like the A-side has a bad stigma of people who always have it easy. They've, they've given things. They've taken the easy route. Uh, my, my boxing record may be undefeated, but if you guys knew how many losses I took to get here, you'd think differently. I'm back on the B-side where I belong, and that's why I'm going to show him. He thinks I'm going to be the easiest win. Well, we're going to see about that. All right, now if we could, thank you. I'm glad we all get along. Uh, Caleb Truex, we do want you to respond, if you have a microphone, give you a chance to, about fighting 
the right. original. There you go. Um, I'm I'm really excited to be a part of uh, this uh, this new venture on Fox, and and uh, I'm excited to have the fight in my hometown of Minneapolis at the Minneapolis Armory. It's becoming a a great uh, boxing hub, and and uh, some of these fighters have been to the fights there that we've had there the last couple years or the last couple months, and uh, we'll have a fantastic crowd there. Um, I'm honored to to share the the ring with a guy like Peter Quillen, a, a former champion like myself, and and uh, it's kind of a, a crossroads fight to see uh, who's going to keep on uh, keep on attending and uh so it's a it's an important fight in my career and his career and uh just look forward to, to mixing it up with him on april was it, april 13th yeah april 13th <laughs> right and you can see it right here yeah i'm sorry i'll wrap up Hi, um, michelle joy phelps with behind the gloves my question is for the charlo brothers how does it feel this you guys are going into your or i guess promoting your first fight how does that feel for you guys does it add additional pressures to what you're already going to experience during um, camp it feels good. Um, me and my twin brother um, worked a long time with Lions Only, and now it's Lions Only Promotions. And um, we're here to take over, take over the division and get the best fights out there and, and, and rule. Um, well, we know that there's other promoters out there, uh, Danes and different promoters, and <clears throat> our job is to stay a boxer and, and focus on that at first. Um, we'll build undercards, we'll do everything working hand in hand with PVC and different different uh, other promoters as we put on local shows. But uh, first thing first is us getting these victories and promoting the Charlotte brothers and the Charlotte twins. We've been Lions only since day one, and we're going to remain Lions only. And that's it used to be a hashtag now, it's a promotional company. So keep it locked with us. And um, yeah, that's it. Keep it locked. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks uh, very much. Uh, we're going to wrap it now. I want to I wanna first uh, thank all of you guys for being here. You are the stars, the engine of this sport that makes it work, and we, get, we can't do it without you. So we wish you a lot of luck. Also very well dressed, too, by the way. Very, uh, very impressed with that, uh, and appreciate the great questions. I know there were some of you we couldn't get to maybe next time. Also, those of you watching uh, online streaming, thanks for that. Uh, can't wait for the fights. A new era, Fox Sports, starting December 22nd. I'm going to ask the, those in the media to please reposition on the red carpet, and over there, there's some locations that are marked for you. We're going to bring the, uh, the fighters, the boxers, over to the carpet for some one-on-one -on -one interviews if you have more questions at that time. So you can reposition. For our entire crew here, look forward to boxing on Fox FS1, and thanks for being with us. All right, have a good afternoon.